Get on the floor! Do it now! The Special Constabulary is the nation's volunteer police force. Do you know the gent? Watch your speed. It's made up of over 20,000 members of the public. Oh, he's gone down there. Who give their time to fight crime in their communities. Out, out, get out of the car! Get out of the car! Specials combine their day jobs... Stage, please! ..and home lives... Here's a good boy. ..with being serving police officers on the front line. Coming up... Oh. Bill's after a driver who's acting suspiciously. A car making off is normally an indication that the driver has something to hide. Grab him. Why didn't you stop? Ross has his hands full with a drunk man who's in no mood to comply. There can be a tendency to be extremely violent. That's this is. I tell you it's annoying. Hey, listen, hey. And Chris deals with a potentially explosive situation on a late night shift. And if they decided to turn against us, um, we were well outnumbered. Big just leave it. But listen, just calm down, all right? Calm down. In Peterborough, Special Chief Inspector Bill Bond is out on shift with PC James Stiles of the Rhodes Policing Unit. I think we've got something here. Eat my fairy dust? I don't think so, sunshine. Hello, fella. Bill is one of the few specials who works with the Rhodes Policing Units, and he sees the work as vitally important. You're there to make the roads as safe as possible, and also you're... Uh, you've got a secondary role of, of denying criminals the use of the road. Have you got a driving licence on you? Yeah, I have, yet. Yeah, so Are you insured to drive this? No, I'm not even driving it. I'm just test driving it. Like... You're not even driving no, it? No, I'm just making sure we've left it. No, that. you've just driven it. So are you insured to drive this car? No, I'm not, no. No, OK, that's fine. Bill, if you want to do the ticket, I'll do the 165. Mm-hmm. Bill deals with the uninsured driver and issues a ticket. What's your full name? Bill's job is running a small lettings agency but he volunteers nearly all his free time for the police. I hope I'll make a difference. I give between 100 and 180 hours a month, which is, on average, full-time police hours. I'm fortunate I'm in that time of life where I have few other demands on my time, and I'm able to do something I really enjoy doing. What exactly is this, then? Oh, it's a... It's a diesel shunt. I was thinking it was going to be a multiple unit, but it's no. a little diesel shunt. Diesel shunt. Bill and James have worked together for years and have become good friends, sharing common interests, including a passion for steam trains. What's that double D we're hearing? Air pump. Air pump. Yeah, the, 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 the loco brakes are air operated. It's very soothing. If you're sitting here for any length of time, you find yourself nodding off. You know. <laughs> it's not just about fostering friendships. Bill believes specials can learn a lot from the regulars. I think if, if specials work with regulars, they can achieve the same level of performance and they can be accepted as equal members of the team. I mean, some of the people that I work with on RPU, um, I've worked with for several years. James, who I crew with quite a lot, I can remember his uh, first day at Thought Wood. Well, you remember oh, when this was built, don't you? Not, not, not quite, James, but nearly. <laughs> James is certainly a character. <laughs> Whatever you do, hold on. Yep, we'll do it. Normally it's James who's in the driving seat, but today's different. At the moment, um, Bill's riding on the footplate of the train and I've been relegated to first-class coach. <laughs> Don't all little boys want to be a train driver? Railways is a, is a massive passion of Bill's and it's, um, it's nice to share that passion with him and come to somewhere like this and it, it's nice to see him relax and unwind. He does so many hours with us and it, it, it is nice to to see him in, a, in an environment like this and, and relax. It's a pleasant change from dealing with criminals and um, offending motorists in Peterborough. His time, dedication and quality of work is far beyond that than even some regulars. I would quite happily work with Bill all day, every day. He's the, he's the sort of guy that you'd want to spend time with. Really top bloke. This is the end of the line. That was splendid. That was really good. The change from me to be driving you. Back on shift, it's now 7.30 p.m. and James is at the controls again. Oh. 
he and Bill have seen a vehicle acting suspiciously. There's a small car in front of us who seemed to be particularly anxious to avoid any contact with us. Bill and James decide to pull the car over so they can investigate more closely, but it speeds away from them. A car making off is normally an indication that the driver has something to hide. It's either because he himself is of interest, there's something wrong with the vehicle, or he's got something in the vehicle um, which would be of interest to the police. He tried to get away from us by disappearing down a side alleyway. Unfortunately for him, a vehicle is coming out of that alleyway. Oh, jolly good. Grab him. Why didn't you stop? Sorry? Why didn't you stop? Where? Right there. I didn't see you. Got any idea on you? I don't know, sorry. Bill, stick him in handcuffs, stick him in the back of our car. Yeah. He was arrested initially for failing to stop. We wanted him under control. James then opened the door of his car um, and saw two wraps of cannabis. Bill? Yeah. Possession. OK. At this stage, you're under arrest. On suspicion, possession of a Class B drug. You don't have to say anything. But I don't know how many defence you're not mentioning. When question something later on in court. It wasn't hanging about. We were um, doing more than twice the speed limit at times to try and keep up with him. And he's obviously done a, a large loop and tried to get back to where he knows. All right, come and sit in the back of our car. We found two sandwich bags with a small amount of herbal cannabis in. Obviously, with that in connection with the reason why he's failed to stop, it's enough to bring him in and, and find out why he's failed to stop and why he's in possession of that. What did he think he was going to do, make off from a traffic car? James checks nearby gardens in case the driver threw anything from the vehicle before he stopped. I've just noticed that the passenger window is open. So I'm assuming if he has thrown anything out of the car, it would have come out the passenger side. James doesn't find anything on his search of the area. However, there's now another issue for the police to deal with. The driver may be securely handcuffed in the police car, but the officer's actions have drawn a crowd. Nothing to do with you, fella. There was quite a lot of hostility from the, uh, the group there, but that's um, nothing too unusual in that area. Go away now, before I lock you up. The concern is that you don't want it to escalate. Oi, go away. Go away. You, get lost. It's got nothing to do with you, go away. They were quite clearly friends and relatives that he was talking to. Therefore, we wanted to get the guy, the prisoner, away as quickly as possible. Bill's called for another vehicle to take the arrested man to custody. Anyway, you're not. He's under arrest. And in the meantime, guards the prisoner. Who, you got a van coming? Yeah. Go ahead, call off. How far away are you from us, mate? Just on Borgie Boulevard, about a minute and a half. Hurry up for me. Go away, now. Mind your own business. You've got to be firm. I think if these people detect weakness, they will um, possibly even try and get your, your prisoner away from you. So you've got to be fairly yeah, firm and, and let them feel that you're not going to stand for any nonsense. On your way, fella. Go away. No, I've told you to go away. What is he getting done for? Failing to stop for me. In possession. You can just go away. Just go away. The crowd is getting rowdy. Bill and James try to get them to disperse while they wait for backup. Just go away for me. Just go away for me now. I've answered your questions, fella. I know he is. I'm doing it for failing to stop. Another traffic car comes to the aid of the officers. It was getting very, very hostile. No, possession and failed to stop. OK, mate. And Bill accompanies the arrested man to custody. I'll meet you back at Fort Wood in a minute, Bill. OK. He's parked up there and obviously a lot of uh, his friends are around and all just being a bit hostile towards police and the fact that we're taking away one of their friends. The driver is taken to custody. Once they arrive at the police station, Bill and James can now investigate the case and they uncover more information about the suspect. We weren't able to do full checks on yeah. the guy at the scene because um, we were more concerned in, in our own safety and getting the guy away. When we did a PNC check, we found that he was um, not licensed to drive. His license had been revoked until test passed and therefore he was uninsured. <laughs> Bill and James interview the man about what's gone on and the drugs found in the car. As you've got out of your car, you've opened your driver's door and in your driver's door pocket, what was there for me, please? 
Yeah, if I show you two exhibits. Can you just confirm what you're going to do with that canvas? The officers also yes, confront the suspect about the motoring offences. They're hoping the man will admit to the charges. So, just leading back onto my next question now. Now, obviously, you're aware of you had no insurance. Why did you drive like you did? Have you got anything else that you wish to say? The interview went well. We got the admission of guilt that we wanted, so you'll go to court. It was nice how the incident unravelled. Um, the further we dug, the more we unearthed. We've been working together for a long time, so we both know how each other works, and we, we bounce off each other well, don't we? We do. Good job, well done. The man pleaded guilty to possession of a Class B drug, driving without a licence and insurance, and failing to stop. He received a fine and was disqualified from driving for 12 months. Specials are unpaid volunteers who work alone or alongside the regular police to fight crime in their communities. You got all of them. I don't want to see you walking on the main road again. Come on. Recovery's obviously on route. Specials are not police community support officers. They're fully fledged members of the police force who have the same powers in law as their paid colleagues, including the power of arrest. Okay. Nice. Stop it. Move over. No, 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 no! Move out of the way. No. Within many special constabularies, officers can rise through the ranks, from constable all the way to chief specials officer. Out, chef under thorn. Let me remind you, you're under arrest, and if we can say, we'll be written down. Specials work 16 hours a month or more as volunteers and undertake all kinds of duties, <coughs> from policing community events to arresting hardened criminals. One thing most specials are well used to dealing with is the consequences of town centre binge drinking. It's Saturday night in Cambridge, and CCTV operators have spotted a man lashing out after being ejected from a pub. Special Sergeant Ross Spaltoff knows what a valuable tool CCTV is for the police. CCTV is imperative, uh, especially in city centre. We can attend incidents as in real time as the incidents are actually occurring and evidential value it's it's um you know absolutely essential sometimes in in actually being able to, to back up a case that we've got against somebody because obviously if it's in if it's on camera if it's on film then there's there's no argument in respect of what that individual has done or is is intending to be doing officers are sent to the scene to deal with the man caught on camera attacking property on the street The police move in to arrest, but the man appears intoxicated. It's a challenge to contain him. Eventually, officers get him into a van to take him to custody. Back at the nearby police station, other officers, including Ross, await the arrival of the van containing the arrested man. I've just had a rather aggrieved gentleman arrested in town. Very aggressive. Um, his colleagues have just asked for some support for, to get him into custody. This will be him. <laughs> Former accountant Ross has been a special for four years and has recently been accepted into the regular police force. But balancing his time has become more challenging since the birth of his son. 14 months ago now, I had a little boy called Elliot. Um, obviously a huge part of my life now. Really, obviously, try as hard as I can to, to fit special in, in and obviously giving Elliot enough time. Ready? Swing that leg. Good boy. There he goes. As a new dad, Ross is keenly aware of why he needs to keep himself safe on the beat. Number one priority is, is going home at the end of your shift, you know, whether it be to a child, to your partner, to your to your um, to your parents. So it does make me more aware that I do need to look after myself a bit more because I've got somebody at home that, that needs me to come home. And back at the police station, it's a tense moment as the van arrives containing the arrested man who's been captured attacking property in Cambridge city centre. He was hitting his own head against the back of the, the van, and so it was a concern, hence the number of officers that, that did come out to assist. Right, we're at Parkside Custody, and you're going to be getting out, we're going to be going into the cell block, OK? Move his feet down off the door for me. 
potentially this guy obviously had, had either drunk or drug related. Um, they can be a tendency to be extremely violent. Hey, all right, mate, you We're going to give you a chance to calm down. Are you going to take that chance? They may have got out of their cuffs, they may have got out of their restraints. Stand up. You're leaving yourself very exposed when you open those van doors. Aye! Right. Have, have, have my said, tell me what you've done, yeah? Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. Did I say Comply. Did I say I comply? Did I say I comply? Did I say I comply? Seriously, did I say I comply? Although he's still agitated, the officers are doing all they can to control the man, and Ross helps the team get him into custody. He'd calmed down considerably from the journey in, um, so much so that uh, leg restraints were taken off of him by myself. Come on in, let's go. But I said, I the officers now need to get him to a cell as quickly as possible. Ross knows that situations like this can change in an instant. I do worry about violent people. Um, Try not to show it at the time. Some people do sense that fear from you, so you just try and be as professional as possible without being overly aggressive, but you, you need to be assertive. But the main thing is to, to try and calm those, those people down as, as quickly as possible. The officers don't check the man in at the custody desk. He's taken straight through to the cells. Once the gentleman was inside the cell... There you go, mate. We needed to search, obviously, for anything that may he may be able to harm himself with or, or harm other officers. In a confined space like this, and with a man who might become violent again, it's crucial that every officer knows what to do, specials included. It's we needed to get him on the floor on a safe mat, try and get the cuffs off of him and then get the officers out of the cell quickly. No, it's this. This. I'm telling you it's what, it's annoying. Stop it. I'm telling you, you, you bunch of You have to have a very thick skin to do this job. I've been called every name under the sun, I think, in the four years nearly that, that I've done this. <laughs> you have to be professional in that respect, non-judgmental, but that can be very difficult at times. Pockets are done, socks. Ross knows the drill because, like all other specials, he's been trained how to handle prisoners. Nothing. Teamwork's absolutely essential no. to be able to search that gentleman safely and to have him detained in that cell safely and for the safety of, of other officers. There's a set sort of standard that we, we use when doing a, a cell insertion and then a cell search. All I have to say is... You pick a point on that person each. Um, you go through your specific job that's needed on that person and then you get yourself out of that cell when the custody sergeant tells you to. Tom, take his wrist. Ross, if you come out. Yeah. Go in. Let them leave. Right, stand up. Stand up, stand up, Tom. It's a real all-for-one, yeah. one, one-for-all type attitude within the police, specifically when it's a violent, um, detained person like this gentleman was. You just want to ensure that everybody gets out there well and, and gets out there safely. One. Good job, thank you. There was a sense of relief once he was the cell door was closed. He was extremely pumped up to the to the extent that you know veins were popping out of this guy's arms and head. He's pumped up, yeah. and there's him. The man was left to sleep it off in the cell, and later received a fixed penalty notice for being drunk and disorderly. But dealing with incidents like this doesn't deter Ross from giving his time for free. You turn up as a police officer, it is literally, you, do, you don't know what that day is going to hold. It's always something I've wanted to do. Um, the pay's not, not really relevant to me. It's just I want to give something back to the community. Also working a weekend night shift in Cambridgeshire is Special Constable Chris Hallett. He's out tonight with PC Ross Williams. Thank you. Chris is well aware that a weekend night shift means dealing with lots of incidents, and especially with people who've had too much to drink. I find it frustrating. 70% of the jobs that we go to are alcohol-related. 
As a special working a weekend night shift um, can be quite challenging, um, especially in the Fenland area, because sometimes there's not many officers on duty. Hi, oh, mate. Yeah. Chris, I'm the SOAR officer. All right, mate. Danny, how's it going? All right. In his day job, Chris manages two police training centres. What access are you going to need? That side or are you going to come in from this side? And is responsible for everything from security to managing contractors. All right, thank you very much. Come on, you can do it. Chris also likes to keep fit, which can be very useful when chasing suspects. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. And Chris needs to be in good shape tonight. He's out on the streets volunteering. It's 3 a.m. The pubs and clubs have kicked out for the night, and Chris and Ross have just come across a disturbance in the street. Wait, what's going on here? We came across um, some males not really behaving themselves. Um, they were drunk. The next thing I knew, two of them ran off. I've learned that uh, anyone that, that runs is running for a reason, and um, I want to know why. Chris gives chase. He's aware it could be a potentially hazardous situation. I would say that running after anyone down any alleyway is dangerous. Um, you don't know what that person's got on them and what their intentions are. Don't spray me. Who's spraying me? Back in against the wall. Who's running, Joe? Right. Why are you running? Someone hit me. Hey? Somebody attacked me. So why are you running from us? Because somebody attacked me. If you only agree, why are you running from us? I'm telling you. I'm telling you what has happened. Been in the kebab shop. Don't get your hands on me, mate. Okay, seven. All right. Just calm down. Tell us what's happened. Somebody attacked me, mate. Okay. Did you see what happened in the kebab shop? Yeah. Somebody attacked me. You know what I saw. The young men tell Chris and Ross that they were involved in a fight in a nearby kebab shop and appear intoxicated and agitated. Why are you after him? Why aren't you after them? Calm it down. Boys, we're sorry. Calm it down. Calm it down. Why would they chase after them if not? We're in the kebab shop. What we'll do then? What we'll do? We're in the kebab shop eating. All right, bang, just bang, bang, listen bang. to what I've got to say yeah. to you. What we'll do, we'll go for a drive down there. Mate, if we can find down. them, we'll go find out what's going on. Hey, we might even what are you like doing you. now? We're just trying to get home. All we're yeah, trying to enough. do now is get home. All right, mate. Chris and Ross head into town to the kebab shop where the trouble started to see if they can find the other lads involved. My experience with um, people who've had too much to drink, they'll either go two ways. They'll act very stupid um, and silly, um, or they're very aggressive. Normally, nine times out of ten, they're aggressive. By the time Chris and Ross arrive at the kebab shop, the lads they were talking to earlier have also returned, and tempers are beginning to flare. Lads, listen. Lads, just leave it. I know it's safe. Leave it. Leave it. Just leave it. As other people start to arrive, anything could happen, really. And if they decided to turn against us, um, we were well outnumbered, so. Yeah, it probably could have gone quite wrong. Leave it. That's my name. Just lift it, buddy. Leave it. Leave it. Just leave it. Leave it, buddy. Chris and Ross are outnumbered. It's a potentially dangerous situation for the officers. Fox shot Mike 5 2. Can get some assistance any mouth, please? I called for backup as early as I could on that job because of the numbers involved. About 10 miles, just about to fight. The chaps that we were dealing with looked quite aggressive. They were very drunk. Hey, listen! Hey! Come in! Listen, listen! So if I'm a colleague, did feel vulnerable at that time due to the fact that our nearest backup was quite far away. Right now, Chris and Ross are the only officers in the town centre. They must do all they can to defuse the situation until assistance arrives. Mate, calm down. Calm down and make your way that way. Yeah, you, you come with me, come here. Come here. Come around here, come here, come with me. You want to try and hit me? Listen, buddy, listen, listen. Chris decides to split the rival groups up. Listen, go on. Stop looking, walk the other way, buddy. But it just stay there, right? I thought we need to get them apart. Um, the best option at the time was to uh, drag the other male down the road, um, get him away from them. Um, I said to him at that time, if he looks back um, or turns around and starts walking back, then he's going to be arrested. Stay there, or you're going to get yourself nicked, all right? Right, well, don't look at them. Turn that way and stop rolling at them, all right? Having separated the groups of lads, Chris now wants to get them out of the town centre to prevent further trouble. I appreciate you walking away from it, mate. We put the uh, two lads in a taxi. I felt at the time it was important to get the people that were um, being focused on by this group of males um, away from the area. 
Um, if I hadn't, um, I think, yeah, it, they would have got seriously hurt. Yeah, there's no no complaint. Um, but uh, um, yeah, there was a group. He was out with his wife. Um, yeah, these mouse um, tried to start a fight with him. There was a lot of people. Our closest backup was about 10, 15 minutes away, um, and a lot can happen in that time. Um, personally, I thought it was going to kick off, but that's why we're here. Sort it out and keep it safe. Now some of the lads have left in a taxi. Chris is hoping the trouble is at an end. But no such luck. The other young men are still hanging around. Yeah, they're over there, mate. Um, yeah, still causing problems, so uh, I think if they carry on the way they're going, they're going to get arrested, simple as that. All the males um, walked off um, into town, basically. They told us that they, they were going to go home. One of the males turned around and started uh, swearing and shouting. So um, we went to have a word with them again. Right, lads, what's going on? Off at Elwyn Road. What are you doing, boy? What are you running for now? Hey. What are you still running for? Running for a lift. Running for a lift? Yeah. Four of you couldn't catch two people. To ensure the lads do indeed go home, Ross and Chris issue a temporary banning order. Once we caught up with the males again, at that point we gave them uh, section 27 notices, which is a direction to leave. It's, right, okay. it's, a direction, it's a direction to leave the town centre. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. It's leaving, not no. criminal, OK? It only becomes criminal if you breach it, OK? Stopping this from escalating makes me feel quite satisfied. Being a special has given me um, a lot more confidence. It's certainly built on my people skills. <laughs> OK, let's go on. Go on. Go on. Just get your cell phone. Yeah. Get your cell phone, yeah. We are volunteers. I don't do it for any kind of financial reward. I enjoy doing it and I enjoy protecting other people.